So More Good News Season 2 is all about people doing good through following their passions, good for their own souls and for others. I'm Kate Cherichello, and welcome to today's episode. Let's spread a little more goodness in the world. Hey there, it's Kate, and this is episode 20 of Some More Good News Season 2. This whole thing began as five-ish minute videos of me reporting on good news pieces I came across each week during the first summer of the pandemic and has now become both a video series and podcast where I am blown away by the conversations I've been having with people from such a variety of backgrounds all doing good for the world. So Morgan News has featured people working for nonprofits, working in the health, arts, military, and education fields, finding ways to go the extra mile to help others in day-to-day -day life, and so much more. Examples of guest careers include music director, acupuncturist, health coach, actor, TikTok sensation, writer, and choreographer, with interviewees coming to us from New York, Chicago, Wisconsin, New Jersey, Florida, Colorado, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Japan, and Bali. What a blessing it has been to get to chat with these wonderful humans. I have to say, some days I felt down and didn't necessarily feel like being upbeat and cheery. But then I would do a Some More Good News interview, and wow, how could I not feel so much joy by the end? People from all walks of life finding ways to make this world a better place. For episode 20, I want to share the feature quote from each of the first 19 interviews, and then share a story of my own with you for this episode. I can't wait to share what's coming next too. And as I write each week, if you have stories of good news that should be shared, please reach out to me. I would be thrilled to chat with you. Follow at positively underscore Kate for more. And for the podcast version, anchor.fm slash some more good news. Andrea Mieres, Iconic Design Group. Lily Kirchner, Light for Autism Corps. Meg Haggerty, Student Affairs at Butler University. Travis Welcome, Change for Kids. Patrick Thornton, Writer, Editor, Multi-Hyphenate. Annie Trinkle, Founder of Animal Alliance. Jim Cooney, Choreographer, Director, Founder of Amplified Artists. Marcy West, USO Pacific. Terry Magro, the Michael Magro Foundation. Alvin Huff Jr., Broadway Music Director, Co-Founder of Muse. Andrew Parks, Actor, Coach, Advocate. Ben Houghton, Co-Founder and Executive Director of Broadway for Arts Education. Kelly Ray, Health Coach, currently in Bali. Dr. Cindy Wong, Acupuncturist. Heidi Saldana, Postural Alignment Specialist. Deanna Gioletti, Content Creator, Influencer, Hype Girl. Jill Harrison Snyder, Director, Connector, Creator. Laura Michelle Cooper, Pediatric Speech Language Pathologist. Elizabeth Kerpat, School Psychologist, Drama Club Advisor, and more. And now episode 20, a short and sweet story about a pen pal. Mrs. Keenan. Let's go back to 1994. The scene is Bloomsbury Elementary School's cafeteria, which is also the gym and auditorium, in the one square mile town that is Bloomsbury, New Jersey. I was about this years old. If you're listening on the podcast, it's me at about age five. Curls for days and for sure a twirly dress. We had two lunch ladies, Mrs. Collier and Mrs. Keenan. And somehow Mrs. Keenan and I became friends that year. Our friendship was simply saying hi in the lunch line, but I was always excited to get to see her. That was also the year I learned what a pen pal was and thought it was such a cool thing. At the end of the year, I don't recall who brought it up to who, but I know we decided to become pen pals. She ended up retiring that year, but our pen pal ship had just started and 27 years later, it still exists. That's my good news piece to share with you today. Mrs. Keenan's address is one I have had memorized since I was in elementary school. I've never had to look it up when addressing envelopes. Every single holiday she sends a sweet card and it took years before she stopped writing your BES lunch lady in parentheses next to her name. Like I would forget this sweet woman. 
she managed to keep up with my changing addresses in New York City too. Despite seeing her in person but once in the 25 years after kindergarten, we never stopped writing. It was my own fault for not making an in-person visit happen and I realized how terrible that was and how much I wanted to see her. She was in her 90s and I wanted to give her that hug in person after all of these years. Finally, when Jeff and I were engaged and in New Jersey for a week, I got her daughter's email, who now lives with her, to set up a time to visit. Oh, what a treat it was. Had she gotten shorter or had I gotten taller since 1994? For 92 years old, she was agile and smiling in her sneakers and brightly colored outfit. Having the opportunity to both see her and for Jeff and Mrs. Keenan to meet after they had each heard about the other was so special. I went back to see her a few weeks ago and aside from a few aches and pains, she says she's doing well. 94 years old. Should we all be in such a good place at 94? <laughs> Vaccinated and starting to see her friends and family again, it was the best visit and hug to receive. And after all this time, we finally got a picture together. So I just want to challenge you. Take a moment to think about someone in your life, a new friend or old, who when you think of him or her, you always end up saying to yourself, I need to see him or her more, or I need to write to that person, or I always feel happier when I leave that person. Reach out, do it. Near, suggest a coffee or a pretty walk nearby. Far, well, we all know that we are skilled in virtually connecting after these past 16 months. No time to waste. We spend over a year apart from those we love, and I do not want that to happen in the future by unintentional choice, do you? So go, call, write, see a friend today. If you'd like to share, I'd so love to hear, so please leave me a comment. Or if you need ideas of how to reach out out of the blue after so long. Thanks for being with me through 20 episodes of sharing good news in the world and I look forward to many more to come.